Hello, welcome to Matador News. I'm Natalie Castillo. And I'm Helen Mora. Canadian lawmakers returned to work after shootings that killed a soldier and shook the parliament area. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper says the country will move forward. Be vigilant, but we will not run scared. We will be prudent, but we will not panic. And as for the business of government, well, here we are in our seats, in our chamber, in the very heart of our democracy and our work. This morning, lawmakers stood and cheered Sergeant at Arms Kevin Vickers, who reportedly took down the suspect in the halls of Parliament. The suspect was shot to death minutes after he killed Canadian Army Reservist Corporal Nathan Cirillo at a war memorial nearby. The suspect in the shootings reportedly had connections to jihadists in Canada who shared a radical Islamic ideology. The gunman was Quebec native Michael Sehoff Fibot, a convert to Islam. Canadian authorities had confiscated Sehoff Fibot's passport when they learned he planned to go fight overseas. Yesterday's deadly attack was the second on Canadian soldiers this week. Canadian investigators have not provided any possible motives for the shooting, but the connection to terrorism has not been ruled out. An independent investigator hired by the University of North Carolina finds a massive cheating scandal. For nearly two decades, advisors and professors gave 3,100 student-athletes easy grades as a strategy to keep the players eligible. The investigator, former federal prosecutor Kenneth Weinstein, says he is shocked by what he found. A lot of these counselors knew exactly what was going on, and they took affirmative steps uh, to take advantage of them. They steered a number of their student-athletes to these classes because, specifically because they were easy, specifically because they were, in their terms, GPA boosters. Four university employees have been fired and five remain under investigation. There is no word on what will the NCAA will do. Is the world ready for two Floridas? South Miami commissioners approved a resolution that would split Florida into two states. The new state would include St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Orlando. Although the proposal sounds far-fetched, it highlights the serious issue of rising sea levels. Water is expected to cover half of the Sunshine State in the next century. Commissioners say creating a 51st state is a necessity for the survival of the southern region. South Florida hopes the proposal will give them their fair share of the state's revenue. California officials are putting an end to a policy that segregated inmates based on race after riots. The old policy allowed officers to lock down any inmates if they are of the race involved in the riot. The new policy allows officers to lock down only inmates in the affected area or only inmates they, they suspect were involved in the riot. Officers say the old policy existed to protect inmates from racial violence. This new policy comes after the lawsuit in 2008. Two Southern California families are mourning the loss of their children. Police say seven-year-old Jamarian Thomas was run over by an ice cream truck in the Broadway Manchester area of South Los Angeles. Officials say Thomas was riding a bicycle alongside the ice cream truck and possibly fell off before the truck ran him over. Thomas's grandmother, who was inside her home, says he was walking the bicycle because it did not work. Thomas was taken to Harbor UCLA Hospital, where he later died in surgery. Following the incident, neighbors and witnesses threw bricks at the driver and the truck. But charges are not expected to be filed against the ice cream truck driver. And in Anaheim, nine-year-old Jimena Mesa, who was shot and killed while playing in, front, in her home's front yard, was rushed to UCI Medical Center in critical condition. It is not clear where the gunfire originated and an investigation is underway. An intruder who allegedly suffers from mental health problems has been arrested after jumping the White House fence. During Wednesday's incident, he kicked a canine unit dog and injured another one. Both dogs are in good condition after being treated by a vet. This is not the first time Dominic Adesanya has been arrested for jumping the White House fence. The 23-year-old has been charged with two counts of felony assault, four counts resisting arrest, and a count of making threats. Matador News reporter Cindy Alvarado spoke to some students for their reactions following last week's discovery of a missing CSUN student's body. Prosecutors say the man charged with the murder of CSUN student Abdullah al Qadi is up for the death penalty. 28-year-old Augustine Fernandez of Long Beach was charged earlier this week with the first-degree murder with special circumstances. 
Some CSUN students say they agree with the charges. I think that maybe he should be in jail for as long as possible. Well, probably for life because that's probably going to be worse than just a death penalty, to be honest. I just think that he just wanted the money maybe for school. Um, but also about the death penalty, I think that's more like severe. It is right because I don't think that the guy also deserved like to be dead. From their perspective, like them coming to another country and this happening, I think it's severe. Fernandez has not yet pled to the charges and will return to court next month for his arraignment. Now back to you in the studio. Don't forget to set your alarms and look up at the sky today, but not directly at the sun. A solar eclipse is coming today and you don't want to miss it, but be careful and don't forget your solar glasses to prevent eye damage. The eclipse will be most visible at around 3 afternoon. Happy watching! Now here's Araceli Solis with the latest on the Ebola virus. Thank you, Ellen. Starting Monday, any travelers coming into the United States from the Ebola-stricken areas in West Africa will actively be monitored for three weeks. They will have to report to health officials daily and have the temperature taken two times a day. Health officials are looking for symptoms of the Ebola virus, including headaches, muscle aches, vomiting, and diarrhea. People coming from Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone will have to land in one of the five U.S. airports with enhanced screening for the virus. Meanwhile, Lebanon reports its first suspected case of Ebola. This is the first case to appear in the Middle East. The psychedelic drink ayahuasca could be the next medical marijuana. Many people believe the plant has the potential to help with suicidal thoughts, post-traumatic stress disorder, and paralyzing anxiety. The ayahuasca experience is increasingly attracting tourists to South America. Hollywood celebrities, including Lindsay Lohan and Sting, have spoken about their experiences with the drug. Lindsay Lohan says it's allow, it has allowed her to let go of dark things in her life. Those who have tried ayahuasca say that its benefits must be combined with therapy. Now here is Akisha Nabetta with the latest in sports and business. SUV and truck sales have nearly doubled General Motors' third quarter profit. The automaker posted a net income of $1.38 billion, or 81 cents per share. GM's revenue grew to 2% to $39.25 billion. This is the first quarter without significant changes or recalls. GM has spent $700 million on recall repairs and $200 million in restructuring costs this quarter. GM's good news drove the stock market today. At last check, the Dow Jones was up 236 points to 16,697. Sears shares are up since early reports say the company would close just over 60 stores before the Christmas shopping season. But the company says the reported number of Sears and Kmart closures is inaccurate. They plan to announce the exact number of closures after they have the results from the third quarter. Sears has been struggling since it joined with Kmart to complete with big market companies such as Target and Walmart. The store closures may result in more than 5,500 employees being laid off. Back to Araceli Solis with the news and sports. Thank you, Akisha. The Kansas City Royals have cruised to a victory over the San Francisco Giants by a score of 7-2. The Royals have won the second game in the World Series. The Royals' bullpen helped secure the victory after they took the lead with a five-run sixth inning. Kelvin Herrera, Wade Davis, and Greg Holland shut down the hot-hitting San Francisco Giants to tie up the series 1-1. Billy Butler hit a single to left field to break the tie and give the Royals a 3-2 lead. Salvador Perez ripped a two-run double into left field, and Omar Infante hit a home run in the left field to make it 7-2. Game 3 is going, to be, is going to be played in San Francisco, with Tim Hudson taking the mound against the Royals' Jeremy Guthrie. The game will air tomorrow evening at 5. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell will have to testify in Ray Rice's appeal of his indefinite suspension for domestic violence. Goodell is being forced to detail under oath everything he knew before Rice's suspension. It's unusual for a professional sports commissioner to testify under oath, but Rice is challenging the suspension given to him by Goodell. If Rice's suspension is overturned and another NFL team signs him, Rice could return to play games this season. 
The 27-year-old former Baltimore player is set to have the hearing on November 5th and 6th. Students will have an opportunity to support a great cause this Saturday at CSUN. Matador News reporter Nikki Hathaway is live at the Sundial Newsroom with more information. I'm here with Sheila Man Herrera, a professor in the Chicano Studies Department and performer in the upcoming benefit concert. What can you tell us about this upcoming event? Well, it's a concert benefiting three different scholarship funds, but most importantly, it's a concert that celebrates 45 years of the founding of the Chicano Studies Department here on campus. And it's going to be done through music, all the groups that are performing, Conjunto Guayapan, vocalist Isha Herrera, Valle Folklorico Olin, uh, Beto Ruiz and his Conjunto Aslan, they're all either faculty or alumni of CSUN slash Chicano Studies. So it's very important as that the department has really it has been recognized through these musicians internationally, regionally, and um, nationally because of the performance and t uh, teaching style of these various artists. Okay, when and where will the performance be held? This performance is this upcoming Saturday, October 25th, at uh, the Plaza del Sol Performance Hall from 7 to 9 p.m., and I believe the doors open at 6.30. And what is it benefiting? It's benefiting three different scholarship funds, the Mecha Scholarship Fund, the Ignacio Pulido Scholarship Fund, and the Adrián and Ezequiel Rodríguez Scholarship Fund. So it's for, uh, to help out financially uh, needy students that uh, require financial assistance and so forth. And so it's a really good cause. Okay. Thank you, Shiloma. Thank Back you. to you guys in the studio. Christian Bell will be playing Stephen Jobs Steve Jobs in the second movie to be made since the Apple co-founder's death. The film will be based on the Walter Isaacson's biography that came out in 2011. Screenwriter Aaron Sorkin says the Dark Knight actor didn't have to audition for the role. He says they needed the best actor and Bell was it. Sorkin says Bell will be in every scene, which is extremely difficult to do. USC is suspending an event featuring Django Unchained actress Danielle Watts a day after the actress was charged with lewd conduct. Watts and her boyfriend were briefly detained by LAPD in September after a neighbor reported seeing a couple having sex in a car. Watts caused an uproar after she accused the police of singling them out because they were an interracial couple. A bystander captured the incident on cell phone and posted it to the internet. And the video appears to conflict with Watts' versions of events. The university said the event wasn't postponed because of the notoriety of the incident, but the university said it could not accommodate the large amounts of requests to the event. Now let's toss it back to news. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Natalie Castillo. And I'm Helen Mora.